You, you kind of touched on implementation there a little bit, so let's segue into implementing these ideas. So what is the current status of implementation and what is your organization doing to try to help um, move this forward on the ground? Mm -hmm. So with this being a new type of rule, um, how it plays out the first couple times it's implemented is really critical right. because um, the rule fleshed out certain things, but there's a lot left up in the air. and so. For my organization, while we're a statewide policy organization and usually don't get involved in the implementation of rules except to uphold them or do enforcement, right. we view this as essentially policy work because it will be setting a model for how it's done. So um, what we're doing is we've identified a couple of watersheds where watershed adaptive management should work okay. and are working with the point sources and the counties and the different groups there to try to get some model um, project set up. So we're working in the, the Madison area has five lakes and we have the Sihar watershed and our wastewater treatment plant um, has really taken the lead on moving this forward mm -hmm. and they've championed that this effort and they've put together a memorandum of agreement where every, munici every municipality, stormwater utility and um, the few point sources that are in this area and then some nonprofits have come together <laughs> and started moving together on a pilot project and then hopefully we'll go full scale for the watershed Very good. in 2015. And so here, here in the Madison area, have you selected the other places where you're looking and are they similar scenarios? Or are you looking at different kind of scenarios to test out? Yeah, we're, every watershed is different. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sure everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, the other watershed that I think is next is, and we're starting to lay the groundwork for, is the Fox Wolf Basin. So for everyone that's watching at home, this is Wisconsin, <laughs> and Madison's here, and the Fox Wolf Basin is um, the Lake Winnebago and like goes into the bay of in between my thumb and forefinger. And that's um, Green Bay, right? Yeah, Green okay. Bay. And so it's the biggest source of phosphorus to Lake Michigan. It's the, you know, a huge problem for um, Clodophora and algae issues in Lake Michigan and a lot of it's because that's the area of the state and actually maybe in the country where there's the biggest concentration of um, large farms mm -hmm. and um, it's the biggest concentration of paper mills mm -hmm. it's it's oh, there's a lot of municipalities there's just a lot of phosphorus running off and um, it's a, one of the major priorities of the EPA so there's a lot of efforts coming together around that watershed and it's really complicated and it's also really exciting because it there's not that um, some of you know Madison is very liberal I think Bill uh, O'Reilly calls it you know the Satan spawn of liberalism <laughs> and so we think of ourselves as very pro progressive Green Bay is a more conservative area and also very practical right so they have a very conservative county executive who's been pulling together people to talk about phosphorus. Mm -hmm. And we have that merging with you know, implementation of adaptive management. And so there's a really interesting mix of people coming together. And they're really focused on costs. Right. So it's an issue that bridges all divides, you exactly. know, the bottom line. So that, that will be interesting to kind of compare and contrast and not just say we did this in what might be considered the bubble of Madison, right. but it's also doable in more, more conservative and more complicated places. That's a lot of moving pieces in terms of the phosphorus situation. So, yeah. oh, so stay tuned. Yeah. And what, what is what, the timeline? What, when you think about implementing this, is it as 